Well, hi, and welcome back to my shop. I'm continuing with the alignment of this little radio. And uh, the last video, I started doing alignment and uh, realized that I had a couple of capacitors blocking access to the lower slug on one of the IF coils. Capacitor's not looking so good anyway. It kind of got me in the mood to replace a few. I replaced the two here, mostly to physically relocate them and renew them. Uh, they really didn't look all that bad. This one in particular looks really good, actually. This guy, well, he's probably fine. But they're out. New ones are in. So now it's time to uh, attempt another alignment on the radio. Oh, I better leave it up like this because I have to get a screwdriver into the bottom. And I need to steady this radio up better because uh, it's uh, not good the way it is. Hmm. I keep a few metal block or wooden blocks around my shop just for this purpose. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, signal generator input straight to the antenna. Switch on, I switched the switch on my signal generator. So, if you didn't watch the last video or you've never watched many of my alignment videos, you got to keep an eye on this. It gives you the frequency we're aligning at 454. And this meter is going to give us the output signal level right on the speaker. This thing is connected right to the voice coil leads on the speaker. And I think we're ready to start up. We'll start it up on restricted power. And uh, that's good because I did make a change to the radio. And uh, although I've never made a mistake ever, there's always a chance. There's always a chance for the first one. So I want to be a little extra careful. All seems just fine. Now, let's see if it works. Okay, the answer is yes, it works. Now, the next question, let me just turn it down here. So we're about mid-scale on this meter now. Is this coil out of alignment? So I'm going to stick this metal screwdriver through the bottom of the radio. Now you might say, wait, what are you using a metal screwdriver for? Yeah, there's some problems with using a metal screwdriver to do this kind of stuff. Um, the metal screwdriver may influence the coils. You'll know it right away. If you go to do it with a metal screwdriver and you begin pushing it in and you hear the radio's tuning vary, then you know maybe you got to go to plastic. The reason I use metal is because of the rigidity of the shaft. You use plastic and you slide it into the slot of the screw. You then begin to load the driver up before the screw turns. You'll put a twist in the plastic and load it and then the screw will start to move it'll pop and then you try it the other way and yet you, you, again you turn it the screw won't turn you load up the tool and pop the screw jumps back you back 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 because of the springiness of this tool if you use a metal one it doesn't happen but with a metal one of course I could short something out here maybe they had to keep my eyes peeled Okay, so I didn't notice any change in the radio. And I'm feeling for the screw head very carefully. There's the screw head. Okay, eyes on the meter. Here we go. Down. Down, wait a minute. Can't go down in both directions. It turns out that this is tuned just fine. It was just fine where it was. And the fact is, most radios, the IF is okay. So all I've managed to do is find out that everything was good on this. It, uh, four 
IF adjustments I had to make. Only one of them was way out. The one on the top that you can do with a screwdriver. Now, how well is the radio working? Um, wait a minute. I think we can do another alignment thing here. So I'm going to disconnect the signal generator. Try to tune something in here. Something other than noise. There we are. Try adjusting the antenna adjustment. Didn't seem to make any difference. Okay. We'll tip the radio to its proper operating position here. Looks like the front dial's way out to me. 680 I think should be down for it, but can't really tell. No no graduation here. It's on the glass of the front of the radio. There's just nothing else to adjust on this radio. Take it outside and do an outdoor test or something with it. It's much, much better than it was, though. Well, let's connect up a uh, external antenna. Do a little experiment here. First, we'll connect up the external antenna on the external antenna wire. Gosh, it's working really well. Ah, it's good. Picking up stuff all over the band now. Fantastic. Now here's the experiment, okay, we'll listen to how loud this is, I'm going to move the antenna to the other side of the capacitor back here, the antenna capacitor, and we'll see if it gets a boost out of that, okay, it's just a, a little hard to make contact, but here we go. Question is, is it better there? No difference. No difference. Okay, that's good. So we'll leave that capacitor as it is. So there we are. I think we're done. I, I think it's uh, working really well. But, you know, it's working as well as you can expect for a tiny little radio with almost no front end. So there we are. I think the lesson, the lesson here is make sure these loop antennas are connected correctly.
the radio is really counting on that antenna doing some of the tuning if I can put it that way and without it the performance of the radio is just going to go and these antennas are regularly uh, messed up because uh, when a person's fooling with the radio they'll often remove the back here and you can see this is really not meant to have the back removed from the radio chassis but people will do that even I've done that because you don't know what you're doing when you first start on the radio you remove it next thing you know you've pulled the wires off if you have no experience, you don't know what's going on, you might think of an antenna as just a piece of wire. So I'll just hook this wire up and it'll play. So you might make it reconnect it somehow. You think it might work. You hear something, you think you got it right, but you really don't. And uh, on goes the radio, uh, v performing very poorly. Just because the antenna's been messed around. Because it is a lot more than just a piece of wire. Here. This is a resonant coil system. Okay, enough of that speeching. I think uh, I think this radio is done and uh, ready to go back in the cabinet. Let's get it back in the cabinet. Okay, so here, here's the cabinet for this radio. And you can see the glass looks pretty good, pretty simple. And it's, it's installed with just two screw clamps. So I'm going to release these, pull the glass out, and clean it carefully outside of the radio. Okay, so I'm going to clean the glass here. Now, one thing you got to realize is that one of the main parts of any radio is this front glass. And if you bugger up the glass, you pretty much buggered up the radio. So, now I'm looking at the back side of it. I can run my finger over, feel the uh, ink. But this is very rugged ink. I recognize this stuff. This one's pretty rugged. So I'm just going to start a little bit of, of just soapy water on my cloth here. And I'm just going to start at the far end here. There's a, some numbers that nobody will care about. And I'm going to wipe those pretty hard. And just as I suspected, absolutely nothing is going wrong there. So now I will work on the trim edge here. Again, if something goes wrong, it's not going to matter much. I need a little more fluid. And I'm going to be a little rough on it here on the end because I really want to know. Okay, the paint is wonderfully rugged, so I, I don't really care to clean the paint. I want to clean the glass here, so I think I'm free to go at it. And you've got to keep your eyes peeled when you're doing this. I've had a couple where you get the impression it's going to take the cleaning, and then part way through the cleaning, after you've wetted it enough with whatever you're using, you suddenly find out you can't take it. Suddenly is a bad thing. And there's no going back on these. Once you've uh, wiped off some of the lettering, it's not coming back. This one's very rugged. So you got very little worry about cleaning it. And another way you can be fooled on these glass things, especially the complicated ones, this one's really simple. It's clearly just all on one side. On the much more complicated multi-band radios, sometimes there's print on both sides of the glass. And so you can become quickly convinced, oh, the print's on this side. Flip the glass over, soak it with your cleaner, and wipe off a whole bunch of words before you even know what happened. So I just can't stress enough how much caution you got to take with this. I'm even nervous about holding it in my hand, because if it drops, it's my bench okay, but if it goes to the floor, it's a concrete floor. This thing's a goner. So I think I'm going to move myself up. Having said that... <laughs> Not looking so good on this side. I keep buffing it. I mean, maybe my paper towel is not as clean as I thought it was. Okay, of course, on the back side of the glass, you don't expect to find too much dirt. Normally, not always, but normally, because it's inside the radio and it's been protected. But on the other hand, often the back side of the glass has never been cleaned since day one. And what it's got is a very thin and uniform film of whatever, everything from 
tobacco smoke to who knows what. So thin, you really don't even realize it's there. And because it's uniform in that, when you remove it, you get this surprising brightening up of the uh, glass. I'm on the front side now, so there's no print. I'm not worried about it. I, I chose to take it out of the radio, too, because A, it was easy. B, this is a pretty solid-looking piece of glass. I'm not so worried about taking it out and then wrecking it. Yeah, it's not buffing up quite the way I'd like it to. So I may be using it. I'm just grabbing scraps of paper towel here on my bench that could have oil on it or something like that. That smearing's on the back. Incidentally, when it comes to cleaning glass, like big glass, like your windows, um, I like to use newspaper, you know, just your regular ammonia window cleaner. But I use newspaper. If you've never tried that, just take a bunch of news, you know, sheet of newspaper, crunch it up a bit. Go ahead, start washing. And I think you'd be impressed by the result. Now this is not coming clean, so let's get some fresh paper here that I know. It's perfectly clean, and we'll try it again. Definitely better. I think too when you're working on a radio and you have it apart, you know, this is the one chance to really clean the glass. And I'll show you something else you get a chance to clean too that you can't do. It's a lot better, but it's still showing streaks. They say, always clean in circular motions. Wow. <laughs> How long have I been doing this? Six minutes already. Just about everything you do, I guess. But not just on radios, but in life. You can pretty much work out your best estimate and then double it, triple it. There's enough humidity coming off my hands that I... Wow. This thing had better really pop. <laughs> now the last thing you want to do is make sure there's no fingerprints on the back. This one's pretty accessible even when it's in the radio. But some of them, you put them back in the radio, you get fingerprints all over them while you're doing it. All that work for nothing. Okay, so I'm going to put this oh yeah one more thing I want to show you put the glass out and clean this edge here I can never be cleaned very well with the glass in I'm not talking about much not on this radio but when the glass is in there you can't you just can't do this edge properly Okay, I'm going to drop the glass back in and put the radio back in next time you see it. I'm out here on my deck. We're going to test this radio outside here. And we got a squirrel visiting us. We got two, another one up in the tree there. Oh, there he is. Two squirrels. I have no peanuts for them, but no matter how much I tell them, they don't seem to understand. Now, who else is out here? Let's see, we got the squirrel here. Oh, there's Draper. There's Draper. Well, here's a cat you don't see too much of. That's Tabby, right there. That's a pretty old cat. And then here's another one. Here's Spunky. Yeah. So I'm the only human out here, but I'm dreading alone.
there's the radio, which we're going to test. So let's switch it on. Okay. Now our first test is going to be just the radio without... Uh, Drop it properly. There we go. Okay. Here it comes. So we're just on the the radio that's built in, or the antenna that's built into the radio. Okay, we're at the top of the dial now. Sixteen hundred and something. Not much directionality there. The knob turns the wrong way on this radio. <laughs> Uh, direct, uh, directionality in a radio like this. Now we know what that interference is, no, don't we? That's my uh, computer down in my office uh, on sleep mode doing that. Hear that there? That other scraping sound is a peanut being eaten by a squirrel somewhere. Tonight, here's the number seven tune, new kid in town from Hotel California. Here's how all the songs fell into place, Don said. Now, here comes a very popular station, 680. Which opens up beautifully. The northbound down valley doesn't look too bad. A little bit of a lineup still on the northbound 404 getting off. Right on the money. Seven because of ongoing construction. Westbound Sorry, I didn't need to yell into the microphone. Westbound I-4 to East Peter. Show.ca. Aaron here. And Simon, your host, with a reminder, our show is filled with it. I think I have a fire today. Yeah. What's the thing to look at? There's my, there's my computer again. Apparently, that sound, that pulsing, that pulsing sound is the power supply in my sleeping computer uh, refreshing the RAM memory. That's what I understand it to be. But every second it gets refreshed. And even though my computer looks off, when you look at it, it looks like it's switched off and totally sound asleep. No, it's not. And I have lots of videos I shot of me trying to sort out um, where the interference was coming from in my house. And it's a number of sources, and that's one of them. So there we are. I think the radio stands up really well now. Uh, before reconnecting the antenna and touching up the uh, one IF adjustment, uh, this radio was receiving terribly. Um, so now it's really working good. So I think that's all it takes. Get the antenna connected right. A little bit of internal tuning and bingo. What is making that scrapey sound? I think that's a squirrel. I started with a bunch of animals. Let's finish off here and see if we can spot the squirrel. That's See that? He's chewing on a bone. 
I'm sure it's a bone, like a... There he is. He's got a bone in his hands. I've never seen anything like that. Some old chicken bone he got out of somebody's garbage there. Looks like he's playing a flute almost. Look at that. Scraping off the outside of the bone and then chewing it down. Has anybody ever seen that before? He's gonna run with it. I got a little too close to him. Incidentally, this tree is a uh, an ash tree, and it's been attacked by the ash borer beetle, which is a big problem up here in Toronto. See those marks? Yeah. All the ash trees are under attack by the ash borer beetle. Anyway, he's going to chew away on that bone for quite a while, so we'll leave it there. And uh, hey, how about one more thing? Take a look at these weird flowers here, and then I'll. I won't bore you with my... Look at that, isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, well... <laughs> hey, on to the next thing, I think.